we're going to start. So I'll show you a little example of what we're making. So this is what we're going to be making today. If you can see it, see how you can see through it? You can see all your heads. I'll put it on a white piece of paper so you can see what it is. So if you can't, if you don't have the cellophane, that's all good. We'll just make it, but with white paper. So first things first, I want everyone to grab their white piece of paper. What I want you to do is we're going to fold it in half. So see if you can line the edges. We're gonna make it nice and even and fold it in half. Once you fold it in half, open it back up and you'll have your little center line. Everyone else is going to be using their pencil for this part, but so you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to use a texture, but I would like everyone to use a pencil. What you're going to do is we're going to find the center of the line that we folded and you're going to draw just about, if you have a ruler, put your number six on the middle. Otherwise, we're just gonna draw a little line across the bottom. So we're starting from one, going all the way across to 12. And you should end up a line just like this. Your fold is in the center of that line and you've just ruled across in a long line. If you don't have a ruler, just try and measure out the size of your palm and measure along that. And then once you've got that line, find any straight edge and make it nice and straight. Just a little line like so. Little longer for me, Warish, if that's okay. Make your line just a little bit longer. Awesome. If you've got that little line, we're gonna follow the center where that fold is all the way up. And you're gonna put a little dot just near the top. Like I have here. So you're going to follow that center line and put a little dot. A little dot just there. Did Isaac have a question? I don't have the unmute button, so. How big is it? You can measure it. If you want to do exact measurement, I would say do 12 centimeters. So then either side of it is six centimeters. And if you want to do more exact measurement, I would do about 22 centimeters up. Don't stress about how big the lines are because either way you're going to have your own mirror and your own window. So once you've done your dot at the top, we're going to have a look at it and we're going to go, all right, so my dot's there, about five or six centimetres down, I'm going to do another dot at six centimetres. So it'll be six centimetres between here and here. Then what I want you to do on that second dot, put your number six in the middle and we're gonna do the exact same line down the bottom as we do up the top. 
So you should have a six centimeter line. I'm gonna go all the way up the top. Five centimeters down, six centimeter line again. Awesome, good job. Yeah, it should kind of look like a cross a bit. The next step is good. We're gonna connect the dots. So we're gonna take our pen. We're gonna draw this line down to here, and down again, and on the other side. I'll show you as well. You do not need a ruler for this bit. You're allowed to have rounded edges. This will become your window. Is it okay we, we take a question from Wash? Wash, can you unmute? Wash, can you unmute? Bella, Bella Lee. Yes, you can talk. Uh, uh, well, you, before what you mean, um, do we need two pieces of paper? Um, yes, eventually, but you could just grab an extra white piece to put on top. Okay. Murat, can you unmute? Um, can you slow down a bit? Oh, sorry, I can. Um, excuse me. Yes. Oh, you've gone back on mute. Okay. I think, I think that's it. Um, right, so I'll just repeat. On. We're going to draw a line down the bottom. Six centimeter, oh, sorry, 12 centimeter line. Then I want you to go from the center all the way up, up, up to the top. If you want to measure it, you can do 22 centimeters. Then you're going to go from this little top point, measure down five centimeters or six centimeters, do another dot, measure along that line, 12 centimeters across. Then you should have dot, line, line. We're gonna follow this dot, draw down to that line and keep following it down. And then the other side too, draw along and keep following it down. If you are a little bit ahead and you feel like you're up to this bit, you can draw a line from the dot there to that dot there. Are you almost ready to do the next step or wait a little bit? Okay, meanwhile, the question from Millie. Millie, are you okay or you raise your hand again? Or are you, I just saw you lower your hand again. All right. Okay, let's move on. All right, so I want you to follow that dot down to that dot and you have little triangles then. This is the fun bit, you get to add in different shapes. Once you've got that line, I want you to go to the bottom. Maybe go a little bit up. So if you want to measure it out, I would move it up five centimeters again. Draw a line. Five 
So you've measured from the bottom five centimeters. We did a dot and we drew that line. Then do you think the next step, we're gonna go across this way. So with your ruler, just sit it on that line. And we're gonna go all the way across. If it goes outside the lines on the edges, like I did here, do not worry too much. We're not going to see it. Now I've left this center bit for you to pick a shape to put in there. On my example, I had a circle. If you want to do a triangle, you could do a flower. You could do any shape. It's Valentine's Day soon, you could do a love heart. So it's up to you what shape you want to put in this section here. I'm going to do a Valentine's Day love heart. So if you want to do a love heart, do whatever shape you feel like. If you want to put your initials, so the example is this one here that I showed earlier. So my example has a circle in it, but I'm going to change it. I'm going to have a love heart. I'll draw the love heart in black so you can see it. So you can put any shape you like. You could put a circle like this one. You could do a square. You could do a star. This is our window. Once you have this line, this line and this star drawn in, you can go around and line up edges. So pick a spot. We're gonna make this line from the top, come down to the center, whether it's a heart or a circle or a square. And same with the bottom, make the line, go down to the center. Got a question from Millie. Millie, can you admit? You were going a bit too fast. Oh, I'm sorry. Gary, can you unmute? I basically just joined, so I don't really know what to do with this, right? Yeah, that's looking good. Now you just need to go all the way up to the top and do a line at the top. Okay. Yeah. It's, like a win it's like a window. Yeah. So you find the top of your uh, shape, move down a little bit and draw the line across this way. Dennis, do you have any question, Dennis? Are we allowed to do any shape? Like any shape. One shape? Yeah, you could do a robot. This little section here is whatever shape. This will make it yours. How about square on the bottom? Definitely. <laughs> You could do a square with a smiley face in it. Mm. All about being creative. So we have Emily, sorry, sorry. Emily is the last one and then we move on. Yeah. Emily? I like my, my look like this. I like that. Look at all those. So ready for Valentine's. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm going to add the spotlight so everyone can see what Emily is doing. That's great jobs. Wow, that's great. All right, thank you. Okay, so this next step, you can keep it simple like this, or if you want to add more sections, you can add more. So I would add more by just going and finding a corner and linking it to my shape so that you're breaking up, finding another corner, linking it to my shape. This does not have to look exactly like I do it. You just want to make more shapes.
See how they're not even? That's fine. Maybe you think these triangles are too big. Maybe you want to do a line in there. Maybe you like them. Once you've got your window and you're happy with it, I just want to see your hand in front of the camera like this to tell me you're ready to go. Oh, I like that one a lot, Isaac. Or hold them up for me and I'll have a look at them. Oh, that's cool, Morad. Oh, oh, that's full. Fun, Millie. Oh, I wish I like that. Oh, look at that one, Abigail. You got a flower. It's awesome. Oh, Aaron, yours is so cool. Oh, you've got a cool triangle with a circle and a square. Maxwell's got some cool sunnies on. <laughs> They're looking. Oh, we got a star from um, Arjun. Another love heart from Tegan. Oh, that looks like a lovely flower from Ashley. This is a very cool design from Celia. Celia, sorry. More love hearts, awesome, awesome. Okay, we might move on to the next step. Looks like everyone is up to this part. So the next step will go two ways. Cellophane, or you don't have cellophane. Either way, you're still doing a similar thing. If you have cellophane, you're going to lie on top of your picture. If it's too long, just cut off the bottom bit. If you do not have cellophane, you're going to color directly onto this shape. If you have cellophane, we're coloring on the cellophane. If you have baking paper, just pretend like it's cellophane. You don't have to, you can color directly onto the piece of paper if you'd like. Now I'm just gonna use a little bit of blue tack because I'm worried it's gonna roll around, but you can just put a piece of this on top of it. But I just have it there so I can pick it up and show you. So you don't need this bit. This is just extra for me. So I can do this. So it should cover the majority of your picture. It doesn't need to go up the top or down the bottom. That's okay. Now what I want you to do is pick some fun colors. What are some cool colors you're gonna pick? I'm going to pick green, purple. I might pick one, two, three, four, five, six. I might pick six. Orange. I might pick four colors. Okay, got my four colors. Now, what we are going to do is color in each section because glass windows have bright colors. So pick a little area and color it in. I'm going to start with the top. If you color from the bottom and go up, your hand will end up rubbing that color off. You want to color at the top and then we're not gonna to touch it again because we need to make sure it's nice and dry. So with your pen, hold the paper with your other hand so it keeps it still. Using your colored pen, we're going to color in one section. Just coloring it in back and forth. Coloring, coloring, coloring. If you are not using the cellophane, you are coloring directly onto the piece of paper. So you'll be coloring directly onto here instead. You'll just be coloring it in like so. If you are using the cellophane, we are coloring the cellophane. Now, be careful not to touch it because it will transfer. So what you need to do just let it sit for a little bit, give it a little blow. Oh, 
sorry, Lauren. Is it possible you lower the volume of uh, the device that you muted? Yeah, I but I can't get it any lower. I might do this. No. Okay, now you try again. Okay, it's because we, we saw some, we hear some echo. I think that's why. I, I think it should be fixed now. Thank you. No, I think it's all good now. All good now. So we're coloring in little sections. If you want to go ahead, you can color in each little section a different color. So that's what we're doing. For the big main love heart, I'm going to do red because love hearts, I think, are red. If you want to do a pink one, do a pink one. If you want to do whatever colors. So we're just coloring each section in a different color. Use your colors that you've chosen. If you've only got one or two colors, try, if you're doing it on pencil, on um, paper, you can use pencil. If you're doing it on the cellophane, I would use texture. You're just coloring in each section, taking your time. Make sure you're holding it with one hand. Don't touch where you've already colored because that will come up onto your fingers. Just coloring it in. Coloring, coloring, coloring. So there's a lot of coloring to do now. So just to repeat again, if you are using the paper, you are just coloring in the paper. You're coloring each section in different colors. So you should end up coloring in yours. Try to have no two colors touching the same color. So maybe have, um, when I have my red heart here, outside of it, I'll put a blue and then next to it, I'll put an orange. So try not to have too many colors touching each other because you want to have it nice and bright and stand out. And just keep going around, just keep coloring. Okay, meanwhile you coloring, uh, we we address some of the question. Yep. Wash, I tried to unmute, okay. wash. I think I think they use parents iPad names. Oh, okay, can you unmute? Wash, can you unmute first? And then you can talk. I think you have some technical issue. You can't unmute. Okay. We move to the next one then. Right. Right, can you unmute? You gotta press the button. Now you have to click unmute before you talk. Okay, uh, now you can. Well, like it, it's it said the host isn't allowed you to unmute. I don't know why. So you gotta you gotta wait until we request that you unmute. Okay, um can I color in the rainbow rainbow? Wait, you can color rainbow. A, heart, a rainbow? You can do yeah definitely you could make it rainbow. Okay. If anyone has any idea of what fun colors they can make it, this bit is all up to you. Whatever color you feel like. If you don't want to use bright colors, you want to use all the similar color, the different shades, you can give that a go. Yeah, you need a, a I think it's a, according to the theme should be a little bit dark tone color. Mm -hmm. Dennis, you have any questions? Are we allowed to use crown? Um, are you doing it on the pencil or on the cellophane? Um, do not on baking paper. Paper. But the markers uh, don't work really well on the Baking paper. That's all right. I, you can try um, crayon on the paper if that works better. 
you'll still be able to see through it. It'll be good. Just make sure you don't, if you touch it, it'll touch on your fingers. So you got to make sure we let it dry a little bit. Okay, last question, Albert. Zhao. Do you glue the, the sheet you're covering up onto I've the paper? Used, no, you don't. It's just sitting there. I've just used blue tack so that I can lift it up and show you. Oh. So what you would be doing is you're just holding it with your hand because it's just we're just using it as a stencil. Okay. So it's not stuck on this paper. We're just sitting it on top so we can take it off at the end. Right. Using it as a guide. The paper behind it is a guide. We're just coloring, coloring, coloring. If you find that some of your colors, when you're coloring them in, don't blend all that well together, just go back over them again. So I might use a different color on top of it. Sometimes what you can do is you can realize that that color doesn't work and grab another color. Yeah, that's much better. If it accidentally goes over the edge of the side, don't worry too much, we're going to cover that up. So try and keep the lines on the inside neat, but if the outside lines get a little dirty, that's okay. We should be close to getting our colors all done. This next step will be us putting it all together. Two more colors to go. What am I going to use? Oh, that looks so good, Bella. Looking so fun. Adding in our little colors. All right, we've got one more square to go. Last square. If you've finished coloring it in and you're on baking paper or plastic or cellophane or glad wrap, get your hand, hold down one bit of it and just give it a little bit of a blow off. It's gonna fan it a little bit because we've got to let it dry. because It's going to be a bit wet. And if you just wanna have fun, just fan your piece of paper anyway, because it's beautiful. You should end up with something that kind of looks like this. You've got your shapes and every single shape is colored in. We've all got our shapes. Emily, I'd like to see how your awesome arrangement of love hearts has gone. Have you got all the colors shape, the shapes colored in? <gasps> Look at that. Are you going to color in your shapes? They're so cool. What, co what other colors could you add? Maybe you could add some like greens or some blues. Oh, that looks so good, Murad. So many bright colors. All right, we're almost at the next step. You can see how the glass all connects together. Oh, these are looking so good. Oh, your fan blew and it folded it. No, peel it open again. 
if it accidentally touched another one, just color over it again. Because if I if I accidentally touch a color and it comes off on my fingers, oh no, mine are dry because I've blown, I've done that. If it accidentally comes off on your fingers, you can just color it in again. Sorry, we have a question from Bella. Um, does it matter if the ink goes through that, the page? That'll happen because it's a little bit, it's a little bit thin the paper. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Hopefully that means the sun might come through it nice and bright. Sorry, I'll slow down again. We're just coloring in each little section. So you should eventually end up with, oh, I shouldn't have put blue tack on it. Made a mess. Okay, we have a question from Emily. Emily, you have a question? Low hand. And if you're coloring directly on the paper, just color directly on the paper. I'll do an example as well. When you're coloring directly on the paper, just be careful that it doesn't go through and ruin the table that you're on. So if you're worried about your parents table, get a piece of paper and put it underneath to protect it. But it's all good if it goes all the way through for us, but you wanna make sure that table's nice and protected. You don't wanna ruin the table. I'm just gonna quickly color this in so I can have two examples. So we're still coloring, coloring, coloring. If you don't want to color a certain spot, you could leave it blank. That's up to you. This is all your decision. What colors you want to do, what section you want to do. I think almost all of us are up to the next step, aren't we? If you are ready for the next step, just hold up your colored piece so I can have a look and then we can move on. Coloring, coloring, coloring. If you're ready, just hold up your work that you've colored in so I can have a look at it. If you're ready to go on to the next step. Are we all still coloring? Oh, we've got a bunch of people ready, awesome. These are looking so good, guys. If you don't have black paper, that's all good. Just grab another blank piece of paper or any other color if you like. Oh, these are looking so good. Oh, that looks so good. Addy, I like your colors you've used. Gabriella, good job with the cellophane coloring in there. Arjun's got some bright colors, some nice strong purples. Ashley's got a lovely flower, it's looking very good. Abigail, I like what you've done with your background color here, how you've got the yellow and then the green and then the yellow, it looks really good. Oh yes, Aaron and James, yours are going so good. Yay, we did on plastic, it looks so cool. Oh, there's a rainbow in one, that looks awesome. Oh, yay, Isaac, yours looks so good. Got some good. Good angles, good triangles. All right, I'll give you another minute or so to get those coloring in. 
then I will have to move on to the next bit. If at any point you get confused, you can come back and watch the video. We don't have a crazy amount of time left. It is. Oh, time. Yes, we have to move on because we we only 15 yeah. minutes, everyone. You're from yeah. behind, watch the YouTube. So the next step, you will grab your other piece of paper. If it is not black, that is fine. You just need a different colored paper or a different piece of paper. It could be two white pieces of paper. What you are going to do is you are going to fold this piece of paper in half. This is how we're making our frame. We're going to have a look at the design that you've got here on your white piece of paper. Fold the white piece of paper in half as well. So you've got two pieces next to each other. It would be good if you used a lighter texture just to see where you're going. I'll use white so you can see it. But you're just going to cut your paper, black paper, similar to this shape. So have your two pieces of paper next to each other and think about, if you want to measure it, measure from your center to the edge of that line. So you'll end up drawing, cutting out a six centimeter line, little six centimeter one. You're going to take it up to the top. And you're going to do a little dot at the top. You'll follow the line that you have here all the way across, drawing that line out. You can put your ruler and you can line it up with the line that you have from your drawing of your stained glass window and line it up and draw onto your other piece of paper or black piece of paper so that you know where to cut. I'm making a mess with this, I'm so sorry. I'll show you again. You're going to have a folded piece of paper, black folded piece of paper. Make sure that your fold is facing towards you and the open section is facing away from you. You're going to have your drawing of your stained glass window. You'll fold that in half and lie that down next to it. So you have two half pieces of paper. I want you to grab your ruler. It's going to line up your pieces of paper together. Grab your ruler. Keep it in line with that line at the bottom. Whatever color pen, like you can use a black texture, you could use a pencil to line up that line. It doesn't matter what it looks like because you're going to be cutting it. I'm just using white so you can see what I'm using. And it doesn't need to be a, um, it doesn't need to be a black piece of paper. It can be a white piece of paper. Are we having hands up because I'm going too fast or do I need to slow down? Hands up if I need to slow down. I have a question from Jennifer. Jennifer, you need to unmute, yes. I don't have a piece of black paper. So grab a white piece of paper, lovely. Grab another piece of paper. Have you got two? Yeah, you two pieces. Fold that one in half. Yeah, awesome. You can use any color paper you like. It can be white. You just need two separate pieces of paper. So your second piece of paper should be sitting next to the first piece of paper. Your stained glass paper, we'll call it. Sorry, so everyone, we can't address all the questions. We need to move on because we have only 12 minutes, okay? We're following that line across. We're going to follow this line across. Follow it across. Find the tip of the stained glass window and that's where you're going to put the tip of your window. Then you are going to connect the dots. So think about how far out that went. You're going to draw your line, connect the dots down and connect the dots down. So you should end up with a shape similar to that. should look similar to this one. Doesn't have to be exactly the same, 
but it should be similar. Mm, I did the dodgy. This, I was wrong with the drawing. I'm going to fold it this way. One more time. Make sure your folded edge is on the edge here. And you are following it along and drawing it. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to cut out this shape. I'm going to get it all lined up. Add the dot. You've got your three lines. Then I want you to follow them down and create your shape. You've got your shape. Once you have your shape, the next thing we do is scissors. So we're cutting along the folded edge. So this is the open edge, this is the folded edge. We're going to cut down this way and down this way to make our window frame. So just cutting along, doesn't have to be really, really neat. You just wanna make it nice. Cutting all the way along down the edge of that window and across the bottom. Have your window frame. My black paper got ruined a little bit. That should be your window frame. I'm just gonna do it one more time to show you. I'll do it with another piece of paper. So you're cutting along your line. So cutting along the bottom of your line. You can cut up along the edge of your line. Cutting, cutting, cutting. Pulling it along that line. Turning the corner and cutting all the way up to the tip top. And then you'll end up with a frame. See, the window frame. We can smile through it, we can put our hands through it. This is the final step. If you have your window frame, hold it up so we can all see. Got your little window frame. Awesome, that looks so good. I like that frame. Yes, we've got some cool frames going. The last step, as you all probably can tell, we need to attach our window to our paper. You do not need black paper. You can use any color paper you like or just a separate colored piece of paper. If you are using, if you are using cellophane, what you need to do is put your window down first. Any color is fine. And then put your cellophane on top. We are going to grab some glue. We want to glue just where the cellophane touches the black or the white paper, whatever paper you have. So we're gonna glue this little top bit here. I want you to glue along the edge of that line, along the edge of this line. Line up the top of your window with the top of the glue and stick it on. Then we're gonna glue the bottom as well. Make sure you're very careful with this lining it up so that we don't get a bit lumpy like I just did. Then you're going to line up the bottom just along the line, gluing just down the bottom. Make sure, try not to get it on the table, gluing along the bottom. So you should have glue if you have cellophane in this top bit here and this bottom bit here. Leaves you with your little window. If you are using the paper, you need to put glue around the edge of your paper all the way along. It's a little bit easier if you're using paper because you do not have to worry about all of your paper should be covering all of the edges. So you put glue all over this area, not on the colored bit, just on the outside area. You are getting your frame. We're going to line it up and put it on top of our colored paper. Lining it up, lining it up, lining it up. If you are finding that there are any sections that need extra colors, you can come back with your colored pens and colored textures 
and fill in those colors. So as you can see, mine comes off the edge a little bit. I'll just color in that little bit there. And I'll just color in this little bit there. The very final step for everyone is I want you to color in, color in, outline your shapes with your black textures. So once we've put glue at the top, glue at the bottom and stuck it on, we are going to get our black texture and outline. This final bit really ties it together because black makes the colors pop. So you're going to go and just draw a line down following your shapes. Just on the other side, following your shapes. It should be nice and dry, your colored texture, so that once you are finished, it won't leak any colors. Following your line, making it nice and stand out. See how it makes that love heart stand out a bit better? Just coloring and following these lines all the way across. Make sure you have a texture that's going to keep working while you're using it. If your texture runs out, grab a different color black. Oh, that looks so cool. These are all looking so good. And the best part about these, whether you've used thin paper or you've used baking paper or you've used cellophane, is we can hold it up next to the window and see what it does. See if the light comes through. So you're just outlining your shapes so that you can see them better. We should end up with something like, hold this up so you can see it, something like this. If you put it in front of the light, you should be able to see through it, or you should end up with something like this. And they're your stained glass windows. I now, what is questions. the very final thing you need to do? Oh, sorry, we'll answer the question first. Yeah. Uh... Millie, can you admit? Sorry, lovelies. Don't have much time left. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then. So don't forget to make sure that we are outlining your lines in a dark black color. Then we have another question from Rat. Rat, you raised like five questions today. Hey, he likes to ask questions. He's very intuitive. Got lots of yes. thoughts. It's good. All right. So, um, but uh, like, what happens if you don't have glue and you can't glue the other sheets of paper on it? No, you could do. You can leave it for when, tomorrow when you go to school, and you can borrow some glue or just have it. Okay. Thank you. So everyone, that's that's the end of how we make the little stained glass windows. I hope we had fun. And I definitely want to see you put it up in front of the sun to see if the sun comes through the back. So I'll show you with my phone because I can do it with the, the torch that. Oh, look how good that looks. Isaac's has got some cool colors there. The lights are going to come through. I'll show you. If you have a look, you can see the colors come through. Look at the colors on the table. Doesn't that look cool? Whoa. <laughs> How awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Great job, everyone. I think time is up. I think some of you fall behind. Don't worry. We're going to upload on YouTube. So you can check in the weekend and you can catch up and do it again. So don't worry about it. Oh, that looks so good, Bella. What a nice frame. Bella, let me see. Are you going to hold your work up so I can say, have a look at it? Yeah, can you hold your word up? Isaac's great. 
Oh, Bella Lee, wow, right. Glorious is awesome. Adelaide, can you turn off the Zoom background? Otherwise, we can't see, it's very hmm. blurry. Silai, yours is so detailed, that's lovely. Tegan's looks really pretty. Oh, they're looking so good. Yeah, it's a great job, everyone. That's it. Uh, look through Dennis's. You can see the sun coming through onto the screen. That looks so wow, good. Wow, Dennis, it, that, it's, it's very, uh, yeah, very creative. Oh, Adelaide. <laughs> great job. I hope everyone has fun. Okay, thank you, everyone. I'm going to unmute everyone to say goodbye to Mr. Lauren. Goodbye. Bye. 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 B